Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Longshot the Dice Game. Longshot the Dice Game is brought to you by Perplexed. It's for 1 to 8 players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Plan and push your luck as the action unfolds in this tense race of 8 horses. You'll buy horses, place bets, influence race movement, and utilize special abilities. The dice determine which horse moves and the actions available each turn. So be ready to adapt your plans. Once three horses cross the finish lines, then your earnings are totaled. While there are many ways to earn money during a horse race, only the player that makes the most money will be declared the winner. Will you play it safe or risk it big on a long shot? So you have the main board where you'll be placing all the horses at the start line. Now this main board also has the winner's circles, First, second, and third will be placed on this board, detailing what your winnings will be if you happen to own those horses. Now, these horses are meeples, and they will be moving around the board with dice. You'll be rolling dice in order to move them and choose them. So you have an eight-sided, and you have a six-sided for movement. And each player receives their own player board along with a dry erase marker, as you'll be marking off many things in this game. You do get a start card. The start card will show you what areas of the board to mark off. You've got concession area, you'll mark the ones that it calls for, as well as you've got a couple bids that you already have in play, or a couple cards, and you'll mark those off as well. Also, you're gonna be marking off $12. You're gonna have that to start at the beginning of the race as you place bids and buy horses. And then you'll take a set of the horse cards and you'll put them at the top of the board. Now, these are gonna obviously correspond to the meeple horses that are out on the track and they all have special abilities on them. Some activate when you buy them, but others give you ongoing effects throughout the game, so based on which horses that you own, you wanna be mindful of all their special abilities. And the big thing here in the top right corner is the cost of the horse. Some are pretty pricey, so you want to spend your money well on the right horse. So gameplay here is super straightforward. The active player will take the two dice and roll them. You always do this at the start of the turn. The eight-sided dice will show which horse moves. The six-sided will show how far that horse moves. And then you'll consult that horse's card. At the bottom of the card, there's already some pre-printed X's. These will show what other horses kind of get pulled along at the same time. But those horses ever only move one space, regardless of how far the active horse moved on that particular turn. Then in turn order, each player will perform one action. There's several to choose from, but they are restricted based on what number was rolled on the eight-sided dice. However, there's a wild that can save you at times, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. But the main actions are concession, you've got helmet, you've got jersey, you've got betting, and you have buying horses. So let's take a look at the helmet and jersey action. Those are a bit of a set, actually. As you get those for each of the individual horses on your player board, you will get $5 for scoring at the end of the game for each set that you've created. So if you take the helmet action, you'll mark it off on your board. And what does that mean? Well, the helmet action just allows you to continue to bet on that horse even if it has reached the no bet line on the main board, which is the red line. Taking the jersey action really is just a way to manipulate the secondary movement track of that particular horse. Again, being mindful of the dice that was rolled, you'll mark it off on your player board, and then you'll find that corresponding horse card. Now, again, that secondary movement for horses will just allow them to move one space if that horse is active. But not all the horses have as many chances to move. So maybe you'll be marking off a horse that has a better return if you bet on it, hoping it crosses the finish line first. Or you're going to choose to bet on the horse that was rolled. You'll mark it on your player board and you'll write in the amount. Now you can bet one, two, or three dollars on that horse. And if you already have a bet there, you can continue to up the bet as the game goes on. But always being mindful of the money you have available and reducing it as needed. Then finally, the, the last main action before we get to concessions is the buying of a horse. If that horse is available that was rolled, then you can purchase it. And remember, some of these horses can be pretty expensive. And again, they have a lot of special abilities. So there's really good reasons to own these horses, not only through the course of the game using their different abilities, but in the winner circle, you hope to get that horse there because their payouts are huge. All right, let's take a look at concessions. Now, concessions are just the numbers on the side of your board and you'll mark them off as the dice calls for. But 
If you complete a row or a column or manage to do both at the same time, then you get bonus actions, so to say. So you move down to the bottom of the grid and you can do all kinds of different things here. You can do the main things like uh, betting on a horse, you can do the jersey or helmet, but you can also just acquire a horse without having to pay for it. But the other things you're doing here is just getting money, one of the main ways you get money in this game. And you'll also be able to manipulate the horses on the track by either moving them up or moving them back. Lots of different options here. And you'll cross that out on your board if you take advantage of any of those special concession bonuses. So what if you're not happy with the dice results on this particular turn? Well, you can tap into your lucky horseshoes. You have three of them at the bottom of your board. These are wilds. So you'll cross one off and then you'll activate any horse number you so choose and mark that on your player board. Any of those actions we talked about. So those are the basics of play. And once three horses have crossed the finish line, you're gonna total up your scores. Let's take a quick look at what the different scores are. So in scoring, the first thing you're looking at is if you own any of the horses that are in the winner circle. First place gets $35, second place is going to get 25, and third gets 15. You'll mark that on your player board if you own any of those horses. Secondly, you're going to be totaling up all your jockey sets. That's the helmet and jersey sets that you created on your board. And then thirdly, you're going to be totaling up all your bets, all your winning bets. And if any of the horses that you bet on pass the red line, you'll get some totals from that. Basically, getting your money back for that one. So you'll total up that amount and place it on the board. And then finally, if you have any money left over, that's the last slot. You'll total your results and the player with the most money will have had the ultimate day at the track. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this is a roll and write, yes. But there's a lot going on here. I love the manipulation of the horses out on the track. It does feel very fast paced and you are hedging your bets. You hope the horse you picked or purchased really will come into the winner's circle. But the thing here is that you're not just dictated to by the dice rolls. You do have some opportunity to manipulate other things that are happening out on the field of battle, so to say. But there's also a solo experience in this game, which was really fun. So definitely worth checking out. Ultimately, folks, though, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.